Hi. Do you know what I've been doing? Can you guess? I've been cleaning my attic today, and right now I'm finally on the cupboard. I'm just about done the rest of it. I'm trying to get everything real organized so that I'll be able to find everything when I need it. It's important, you know. Like this basket, for example. I had felt pins and screwdrivers in the same basket. That will never do, will it? So I'm going to take all the felt pins out, and the screwdrivers over here, here's another one. They're all over the place. Any more? Oh, here's one on the floor. There, and I'll put these down here. Maybe you can help me do some more organizing in a minute. to do. I have so many things planned for you. We'll laugh and we'll play. We'll sing and we'll pray. I'll tell you a story or two. And we'll be friends, you and I. Yes, you and I and Jesus. think all these pencil crayons I think I should put them in one place shouldn't I maybe I'll put them in this basket what do you think would go with pencil crayons maybe felt pins they're kind of the same aren't they I wonder do you think I have room to set my little paint package right on the top I think so can you think of anything else I think this is probably a good amount and I'll set them right down here on top of the tools now let's see, I've got scissors and tape in this basket. Kind of things for making crafts, right? Why don't I put the glue with that? Maybe this tape should go with it too, what do you think? I think that'd be a good idea. So then we'd have tape and scissors and glue in this one. I think that's good. Maybe the stapler should go in here too because it's for holding things together like the tape and the glue is. I think that's a good idea. And if the stapler's going in here, I should put the Thing that pulls the staples out, shouldn't I? Okay, so we can put this basket in there. That looks so much better, doesn't it? Now, I think with all these little paper, um, tacks and paper clips, I think I should put them with the other tacks and paper clips. Don't you think so? Okay, let's get them all in there. It's a good, it's nice to have everything together, the things that are the same together, because then you can always find things easier and it just looks so much nicer in your cupboards and everything. And I think I'll put the elastic bands into one of these containers. That would be a good idea. And there's pencils there. Maybe I can put my cards with that too. If I can put that right on this shelf. That's a very good idea. And my things for making crafts, my rope and my big styrofoam ball. Maybe they can go here too. Do you think things are starting to look better? I do. Then right with that. Get my elastic bands in there. They're important to have in there. Well, I think things are coming together. Okay. You know, there's a Bible verse that talks about making everything neat and orderly. And that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. And would you like me to read it to you? I will. It says... Everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. That's important, isn't it? I think I should write that down. And maybe if I write it down, I could hang it in my cupboard. And then every time I open my cupboard, I'd be reminded. I think that's a good idea. So I'll need a pencil. Haha, <laughs> I know where they are because I organized my cupboard. I'll use a felt marker, maybe blue. That's a good bright color, isn't it? Okay. Let's see, everything, everything should be done in an orderly way. And I'll put the Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 40. 
and I'll put my felt pen back where it belongs with the other felt pens. And I'm going to put it up here. Oh, I'll need tape, won't I? Good thing I knew where it was, right where it belonged, with the other tape and glue and scissors and stuff. There. And then I'll put it right up here. Everything has a place in my house. It sits on its shelf just so. It helps to keep my house in order to know where everything goes. I know where everything goes. I know it helps to keep my attic in order to know where everything goes. Speaking of being neat and orderly, did you know that bees keep their beehives neat and orderly? They do. And I made one so that you could look at it. And I'll show you how you can make your own right now. You need a styrofoam ball from a craft store or from a hardware store and then get an adult to cut the end of the styrofoam ball off so that it's flat on the bottom. And you need glue and you need rope. Always make sure that when you buy the rope, buy a kind of rope that's a natural fiber. Don't buy something like a nylon rope. You have to buy a rope that's natural. And you can buy that just at a regular hardware store. And you start, get your rope hook, put your glue around the bottom first and then lay your rope right on top of your first layer of glue. And then to make it easier for you, poke a pin in to hold the rope in place. And then just start turning the ball like this. And you just keep pressing the rope on. And then once you get around that far, then start putting more glue on all the way around so that it'll stick the rest of the way around. And then just hold your ball in place and just keep turning it and keep pressing your rope on as you turn it. And you just keep turning it all the way around. And as you go up, you may need to add more glue. And remember to keep pressing on it as you go. Now you know, bees are very neat and orderly. Did you know that one of the bees' jobs is to be a house cleaner to keep the hive neat and tidy? That's one bee's job. I think it's time to put more, more glue on. And you just keep going up and down with your glue. And then just keep turning. Always remember when you make a craft to put some paper on the table so that you won't make your table dirty because it can wreck nice furniture if you get glue and stuff on it. When you get to about this point you need to start putting glue on on the top layer so that it will stick to each other. And remember don't pull it too tight because if you pull it too tight then it then the rope will kind of roll up and it won't sit so nice on your beehive and you want it to sit nice because you want it to look just like a real beehive. See the little bees that I put on my beehive? I drew those ahead of time but you can get little fuzzy bees from a craft store, from a department store and you can and sometimes they have wires on them and then you can poke them into your hive. And so you just keep coming clear up to the top like this. Now, if you've had trouble along the way getting your rope to stay in place, you can take any kind of a pin and put it anywhere you need to to get it to stay in place. And at the end, just put in some more glue so that you'll have plenty of glue there on the top. And then get your scissors 
and carefully cut the rope off. If it's thick rope, sometimes it's a hard cut. You might need to get someone to help you a little bit. And then just to end it, just take a pin to hold it in place because otherwise it won't hold until the glue dries. And then you can take a black felt pen and you can draw a little house, little door on the front of the bee's house, like, like so. And then put your little bees on and then your beehive's done. Now listen, in just a minute, we're going to go see a real beekeeper and his real bees and I'm going to be wearing something funny so I won't get stung. Hey kids, if you love all the fun things you get to do with Janice and her friends, you'll flip over this. It's Janice's activity book. Loaded with fun, this book teaches scripture through mazes, puzzles, dot-to-dot -dot games, coloring, and more. And the best part is, it's free! Let's take a look inside. The scripture on this page says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's circle the pictures that are the same. That's right, you've got the idea. There are many more fun-filled activities in this book just waiting for you. By the way, did I mention it's free? To get your very own copy, have your mom or dad write to Janice's Attic Activity Book, Care of 3ABN, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Don't wait. Order yours today. Thank you. Well, here we are. Hi, Mr. Carey. Hi, Janice. Thanks for letting us come and watch you do your honeybees today. You're welcome. Looking forward to it. I'd like you to meet my friends. And friends, I'd like you to meet Mr. Carey and his sons. Would you like to introduce your boys, Mr. Carey? Yes, this is uh, Nathaniel. He's almost seven years old. And uh, he's going to be helping me smoke the bees today. And this is Matthew, my youngest. And uh, he's almost five years old. My, they're somewhat the same age as you, aren't they? Well, Mr. Carey, you had me dress up like this, and I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what I'm wearing. What do you think of how I look? I look kind of funny, don't I? <laughs> well, this here is uh, the hat that we use, and then a bee veil that we put over, over top the face. And then this is some, some bee gloves that we use that we oh. put over our hands. Uh huh. And we have a little, uh, it's vented here because it gets pretty hot in these during the summertime uh -huh. and that kind of keeps us cooler. And then we have a pair of coveralls on and then we put uh, either boots or tennis shoes or something like that. So all what I'm wearing, this hat and veil, will keep me safe from any bee stings? That's correct. Boy, that's neat. So I'm safe out here with all these bees. Well, what do you think, kids? Do you think you'd like to see some bees right up close, maybe a queen bee or something? I think I would. Would you be able to show that to us? Sure would. Okay, Nathan, let's open up this beehive and see if we can uh, find some honeybees inside. And we'll look at the, the frames where the bees live. Oh, listen to them just humming away. Okay, I'm going to pull a frame out full of honey. That. Doesn't that look good? And all those little cells, they're made right, mm -hmm. right from the, bees make them themselves. Mm -hmm. See, right here is the honey. Mm -hmm. Right here is the fresh honey. Ooh, that looks delicious. Don't you like that? I bet you'd like to have some on your toast for breakfast. What is interesting is the worker bees, when they hatch from the cell, they have six different stages that they, uh, different duties that they do. They, It'll start with maybe house cleaning, mm -hmm. uh, feeding the baby bees, mm -hmm. um, fanning the hive, mm -hmm. and then the, the last duty is, is going out and gathering nectar mm -hmm. and pollen, and the nectar which they make into honey. Bees are very orderly and, and clean and neat. They're just amazing housekeepers. And God has put all that instinct in them. Boy, I think I could learn a lot of lessons from the bee. What about you? Do you think you could? Look, Janice. There's the queen bee. Is she the one that's longer than all the other ones? Mm -hmm. She's at least 50% longer. Oh, can you see it? 
Did you know that she can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day? A day? A day. That's twice her weight in eggs every day. 2,000. She's a busy bee, isn't she? Oh, look, see, she's putting her head down inside. Uh -huh. To check the cell first? Mm hmm Like to see if it's empty or something? Right, see uh -huh. if it's empty. She's laying an egg. Right can now. you see that? She just put her body back down inside the cell, and she just uh -huh. laid an egg. Now uh -huh. she's coming back out. Isn't that interesting? Just think what the what God has put in her mind so that she'll know how to do the right things. Mm -hmm. Have you enjoyed this? I know I sure have. I've learned a lot about how bees are orderly and how they work hard and they keep their hives so clean. I think we should tell Mr. Carey thank you. You're sure welcome, Janice. I've really enjoyed it. Well, we have too. You know, the amazing thing about how God created the world is that everything lives at just the right place and does just the right things at just the right times. Think about the fuzzy little caterpillars that you sometimes let crawl up your arm with all those creepy, tickly little legs. You know, those caterpillars aren't always all that beautiful, but at just the right time, they turn into the most beautiful, beautiful butterflies with the delicately formed wings that flip from flower to flower. And they're kind of fun to catch, aren't they? Have you ever caught a butterfly? I have. It takes patience, though, doesn't it? Butterflies are beautiful. Or have you ever seen those tiny little tadpoles that swim around in ponds? Sometimes they're hard to see because they're so tiny. Now, this tadpole's quite big, but nonetheless, he has that back fin, just like those little ones do that just swim around. And then at just the right time, when everything's right, guess what those funny brown little tadpoles turn into? A creepy, slimy, but adorable looking little frog that lives in a pond, just how God made it to be. Imagine what would happen if a frog tried to live in a desert. That wouldn't work, would it? God knows he did everything right. Everything has a place in the wild. God gave it a part all its own. He watches nature's perfect balance. God knows where everything goes. He knows where everything goes. God knows where everything goes. He watches nature's perfect balance. God knows where everything goes. <gasps> well, little guy, what are you doing down there? Are you on your way to the pond? Don't let me frighten you. I'll put you in. Then you'll be right where you belong, too. Did you know that one of the best ways to become a good friend of Jesus is by spending personal time with Him every day? Well, adults do that by praying and by reading their Bibles. But if you can't read, it's kind of hard, isn't it? Or maybe you just like listening to tapes. Well, here's a fun way to have your very own devotions every morning when you get up. Janice has made these morning time devotions for her kids and for you, complete with songs, prayers, and stories. For more information, have your parents write to Morning Time Ministries, Box 208A, Kitwanga, that's K-I-T-W-A-N-G-A, British Columbia, V0J2A0. Or call 1-800-263-7671. Here's the number again, 1-800-263-7671. My bell just rang and I'm pulling up the basket. I wonder what's inside of it. Let's see. Oh, look at this. This is an old-fashioned pocket watch just like the kind my grandpa had when I was a little girl. Looks just like it. You know, watches are really important, aren't they? Because if you didn't have a watch or a clock on the wall, you wouldn't know what time it was. And if you didn't know what time it was, you might be late for school, you might be late for appointments, you might be late for dinner, you might even miss your meal. Yeah, watches are important. It's important that clocks and watches work right, too. I guess everything would have to be all in order inside of them and all working together. All the pieces have to work together just right. I wonder if I can open this up. Let's see. There. Okay. 
Oh, this is real interesting. Would you like to see the inside of it? See if you can look real carefully. This is how you wind the watch with this winder up here. Do you want to listen? That's how you wind it. And when you wind it, you can feel it getting tighter because it's putting tension on this um, spring. This is the main spring of the watch. Now, you know, tension, I, that's probably a word you've heard before. That's what makes, like when you pull an elastic band out, it makes it real tight. And then when it comes back together, you see, when you wind, when you wind this, then it puts the tension on the main spring, and then as it's coming back together, it's making the balance wheel turn back and forth. See it going back and forth? And then the balance wheel is putting tension on all the little gears inside of there that are ticking and turning. And as they slowly turn at just the right speed, then those little gears are what make the hands of the clock go around at just the precise speed and precise time that they should go around. I think clocks and watches are pretty important. And the way that they work together and the way that everything is inside of them is in, in an orderly way is important too. We can learn a lot from the things around us about how God wants us to be, can't we? Listen, I've got a story, and I think you'll enjoy it, so why don't we come over to the story corner, okay? Watches are good because they can help us remember to do things at just the right time. And this story is a very interesting story about a little girl who didn't always get her things done at the right time and what she learned. Grace and Norma were sisters. Grace was 14 and Norma was 12. But even though they were sisters, they were as different as lemons and strawberries. Norma was very orderly, and Grace was just the opposite. Grace's mother was always trying to figure out some way of helping her to be more tidy, but nothing seemed to work. Often she would say in a despairing tone, Grace, I don't know how you can even think with your things always so messy. Grace made all sorts of excuses for her untidiness, but her poor mother would just shake her head and say, Dearest child, there's no excuse for your unkept clothes and messy room. You have plenty of time to keep things neat and orderly, and you should use your time wisely and do your jobs right and when they need to be done. In the meantime, Norma would be scurrying about tidying her bedroom or mending a fallen down hem or sewing on a, a lost button. She was such a cheerfully busy little miss that it made Grace's laziness all the more noticeable. One warm summer afternoon, Grace was out in the yard, lazily laying in the hammock, when Norma came racing into the yard and excitedly told Grace that Mrs. Jackson had just called and invited them to go with their family on a drive. Norma said, Even though Mum's not home, I accepted for both of us because I know she won't mind. We better hurry now. It's 2 o'clock. Mum should be home by 3, and they're picking us up at 4 o'clock sharp. Ah, <sighs> Grace yawned, and she said, That sounds nice. Do we have to bring anything for the picnic supper, though? Oh, yes, I almost forgot to tell you, said Norma. What would you rather do, bake cookies or prepare carrot sticks? Oh, I think I'll choose the carrot sticks. They sound easier, said Grace. Okay, said Norma. Then I better hurry if I'm going to get the cookies baked in time. And away she ran. But Grace wasn't quite so energetic. She left the hammock and wandered upstairs into her bedroom. The problem was that her closet was in such a mess that she couldn't even seem to find anything decent to wear. And anything that she did find had some sort of a problem. The blue dress was missing buttons, the green dress's hem was down, and the pink one needed to be washed. Finally, she chose her yellow dress because it was missing the least buttons and only had one small tear in the skirt. In the meantime, Mother had just gotten home and was listening to Norma's excited explanation of the good time in store for the girls. She smiled as she listened to Norma's story, and then she said, Well, I'm happy that you can go with them. You'll have a splendid time, I know. How about your picnic lunch? Do you have everything ready? Well, said Norma, I've already taken one batch of cookies out of the oven, and the second batch will be out any minute. There will be plenty to take, 
plus enough to fill the cookie jar. Oh, said Mother, laughing. Your father won't mind that one bit, Norma. Right then, Grace came strolling into the room with her dress over her arm and said, Oh, Mom, I'm wondering if you would be able to mend my dress. I have to fix carrot sticks and finish getting my hair done. Mother looked at the dress in Grace's hand and said, Grace, is that the only dress you can find? Uh, well, stammered Grace, and she began to make excuses. But Mother just said, Grace? You must learn your lesson sometime, and maybe today is the day. You will have to fix your own dress, my dear. I have told you over and over to keep your clothes neatly mended. But you don't even listen, and instead, you choose to let your things get untidy. And now, you must suffer the consequences. Grace slowly turned and started upstairs, her face a flame with embarrassment and shame. But then her mother called her back. Grace, come to think of it, you better prepare those carrot sticks before you mend your dress, because Norma will need to take the carrot sticks on the picnic, even if you aren't ready to go. Grace began to beg her mother not to make her do them first, but her mother firmly replied, do as I say, Grace, you must do your share of the picnic preparation. It wouldn't be fair for Norma to have to do it all just because you have been irresponsible and lazy. Grace reluctantly began to head into the kitchen and started to fix the carrot sticks. She tried to hurry, but by the time she was done, it was almost 3.30. She dashed upstairs to mend her dress. She felt very frustrated and she tried to hurry. But as she worked on her dress, she did have time to think. And deep down inside, she knew that it was her own fault that she was in this pickle now. At exactly four o'clock, the Jacksons drove up, and Norma rushed out to the car with the lunch basket in hand. Mother came out and explained what had happened to make Grace unable to go along. Everyone was sad that Grace couldn't come, but they realized that it was best. And while they drove away, Grace, with tears in her eyes, stood looking from the window. In her heart, she knew it was her own fault that she wasn't going with them. And she made a little promise to herself that she would start right then to be more orderly and careful with her things. Then she dried her tears and went back to her mending. She knew she had lots to catch up on. Did you like that story? I did. There's lots to learn. I think God has a special place for you in his great universe. And he knows just where you belong and what he wants you to do. Everyone has a place in this world. God gave you a part all your own. God helps you live in harmony. God knows where everyone goes. He knows where you go and where I go too. I think I'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye.